All right. Uh, what you're seeing here today, um, or going to see some of, is the very beginning of putting all the books together that will have uh, the most important text uh, in its original formats. And what you're seeing here today is the prophets. And what I did was I put them in order. And these books are to um, are starting to look good and I'm starting to even mesh some of the text together with uh, say like Ezra is not a prophet, we found that out. But we found out Haggai is a prophet in there. And then we have this, uh, the single book of Haggai and we'll put that in together. Now, what I've also done is the Psalms. So in there you've seen how I could uh, label them from which uh, prophet was, being, was saying because of the words. And uh, then the, some of the kings by the situation um, that was described in the text. And then I put a king on it. And what this is, is to show you uh, the very beginning of uh, how these are going to go. So each time I um, complete a set, I'm going to go in and I'm going to add it hopefully to this this uh, text that you're seeing today. And with this text, let's begin here with uh, this here. Um, now, what I've got here is some of the prophets uh, that we've done and you can see here that You can see here that I had to throw out some prophets These three to be exact so far now we have four more to go But the object is is um, these have no prophecy now I've put some titles on them. Okay now these titles are uh, kind of tell you where they're going to be placed in the order okay so this one starts out with solomon and i needed to change the word not from but through and then as i go through here i'm going to scroll pretty fast but here uh this text here has to be moved to the end of jeremiah for the fact is, is that it's speaking to the remnant of uh, Edom's uh, kingdom, but it's this, um, the words in here, are how they uh, didn't kind of help out or do anything that uh, they were, okay, they were rejoicing over the sons from Judah being taken away on their day of destruction. So this could not be here at the same time in Solomon okay so here what we've got here um, is Obadiah needs to be replaced with Jeremiah and it needs to be moved to the end of the text I will do that in the next part um, here I'm getting ready to show you uh, what it's going to look like when it's cleaned up and I'm going to be adding um, some uh, right now I'm putting in the kings and the times of when this would happen and this would happen with uh, David at the time uh, he conquered um, Edom and uh, Aram or the Armenians he did capture them and then they ended up paying tribute but the text looks real good and clean and this is the note that it's going to be Jeremiah 2 and it's going to be stuck someplace else then we have uh, Amos. Now this is uh, in the text itself. It's talking about East Manasseh being taken away. But uh, I, when I was reading the text, um, and I know that when we're talking about East Manasseh, but you have to remember, you got to think about Elijah and Elijah, um, what what happened in their days, and I think it was uh, Elijah that said that uh, he was the only prophet. Uh, for Israel um, because at this time this is pretty much where the dating of this uh, text comes to to here so then he went to Judah is going to be a true story but he does come back and he is going to say things now when it was for the king of uh, Jeroboam that's just not true um, what you have to do is 
we have to look at uh, the timeline and uh, um, say, hey, we've got we've got this uh, prophet living. Let's see if I can do this. Um, at the time of Asa and the time of Jehoshaphat. Okay. Now the thing here is, is his um, this first prophecy. See, they're saying from Jeroboam. Okay, so that'd be up in here as a timeline. So it would have to be 38 years to be here. Now, I just don't think it's Jeroboam, even though when the video was saying that uh, he did die, so did his son, his son. He was actually killed by this guy here. And this is a son from uh, Solomon. Let me, because when I've done a lot of research, um, the story does say that his son took over and he killed him over here. Uh, and then Ismanus was lost. So we have to realize that the text is coming from at this time. And when it talks about him being taken away as a herder from herding the fields, that means he already is probably over uh, 15 years old. And you know, I can't have these people living more than 65 years. That just was an incredible length of time. Um, if the example, if we didn't have all the medicines we have and the surgeries, I sure wouldn't be here and I'm 65. So I, I kind of know what I'm talking about here. But the object is, is that I'm using uh, this guy here because this guy here was Jeroboam's son and he would have been living in the capital city uh, in Bethel, okay? So let me get back here. I just wanted to make sure that I explained why I changed it to this king here. Now, <clears throat> and against their many descendants, um, this, this needed to be because family is not really, you could have a family unit, but you had relatives that would try to stay in power because once a king got there, uh, the status of the whole family would rise up a little bit. So uh, he was talking about uh, against the sons of Israel that um, from that area and against their many descendants, okay? So if this wasn't talking about uh, his descendants, the son of David and the kings from Israel. Hear this prophecy against the sons from Israel. Okay, because um, against their many descendants. This would have been uh, the tribes. Okay, I'm sorry. So it wasn't about his. It was about their, uh, not entire families. It was against many descendants because some of them were good. They, some still obeyed our creator. So that needed to be corrected. Um, down here, it seems I've got three verses added, but I don't see that I had actually... Okay, I'm trying to look to see if there was a format of that you're gonna see that I'll show you in other, some other ones here. But this just ended and it didn't have nothing here. And I know that uh, I added Manasseh here, but the object is, is the story talks, tells the truth here. Um, then, this is the story that I was telling you about. He fled away, um, uh, Amos, how he, he fled Amos to Amos. Uh, Preset Bell, or Bell. I guess I should have the word said here. Said to Amos, flee to Jerusalem, or to Judah. But the object here is, is um, I gotta make a note of that because I'll forget that change. Anyways, I had to change his name here and change his name here. And then down here, when it says, now I am a prophet and a son from a prophet, well, um, I couldn't see that because 
herders are not prophets. It would be that he, our creator took from the common people um, and the poor people and made them uh, his because they would be more faithful. They didn't have all the wants of having so much money they could do anything and their corruption. Um, people have a harder time living uh, to our creator when they have uh, over an abundance of money or a status. So a herder is kind of um, showing you the poorness of the family. And I believe it wasn't a prophet, but he was a herder and he was a son of a herder. So um, the other thing is, is this being said here, uh, rarely is a prophet married, okay? So, and because I don't have the background for here, I'm just saying, hey, uh, herders are more, the word herder is more true. Um, then um, this text here in the story of what's going on um, is at the end of Jerusalem or the kingdom Israel. Now, when I said, or when I pulled uh, this up before, you can see that they're losing them here. East Manasseh was lost, but he has to be around, or he's now talking about down here. He's, he's now talking about down here. So he has to live in Jehoshaphat's time, and probably through here, uh, we've got some time that he could live right here. That's 35 years. So if I just put these two years together, that's over 60, uh, 70, what, three years? <coughs> so he has to uh, start in here and maybe very close into here is when he's going to um, proclaim this other prophecy that isn't going to happen until all these years later, 115, 20 years later. Um back to the text to see what I've done here and I've added this placement here and I even tried to show that Johas Johas Jo Jo whatever this king let's get on with it <laughs> and putting this into the story of trying to show that I think he might have been in just this timeline is to be most truthful um, and this is the story. The priest in Bethel. So to Amos Fleet. Okay. Now we've got that in there. Um, and then he, this is a cleanup version. And then we're going into Hosea, Jose, Jose, and uh, I've changed the title. I didn't change it here. I changed it later. Um, now, this was interesting because when I went and kept reading this, it says he conceived a son, but he named him the, the woman's, uh, the wife of uh, this king um, as a son. Well, that wouldn't make sense. So I, I, she was a daughter and then had to correct she and then named Jezreel. And then for the son down here, and then they had him named this. I didn't think that was the correct because of doing Jezreel and we're talking about the ending of Jezreel's or uh, Jerome's uh, descendants. Um, this has to be um, his name here. Now, after she weaned him, she gave birth to another son. And this is representing the people uh, that's going to be there. So I added an R here, Loram. Um, but the object here is, is uh, um, these people, these names now reflect the meaning of what it is. Um, so when it's cleaned up, let me also show you something here. Um, and this, and that is um, Jer Jerome right here, okay, 
Now, this guy here is, if you see his descendants, these are um, descendants from Solomon, and they had been corrupted, and then you can see how the sons, it was his second son here. But this uh, son from this king actually killed him and killed all of all the relatives and everything for this uh, king here. So he did, uh, Jehu is probably one of the greatest kings for um, having the greatest faith of going out and doing what our creator said. He went around killing off all those um, people that were for um, different gods. They were divining, they were meditating, having so-called so -called sex with a female goddess. And he went around and killed them and killed their priest. He did a really good job. Um, and this is the prophecy at this time, okay, uh, against Jerome's, uh, J. Ram's descendants. So this is the order that the text is following. And when you read this story, it is talking about punishing the descendants again from this guy, okay. Um, but it was the blood that she shed. Um, I told the story of what happened at that time when I was doing the text. Um, Habakkuk, this story starts, it comes in here. This part starts as a plea to Wivy. And uh, when I needed a few changes, uh, this these changes seem to uh, be, make the text read a lot smoother. And then down here, um, the word is Lord, or the title is Lord, because Lord is over them, and not God over them. Uh, uh, when you're using a title for our Creator, you've got to kind of use them correctly at all times, or you should, um, because God is a title, it's not His name. Um, but God refers to uh, how the Hebrews were using it was we know about their God now and it's a God to God kind of comparison is how they would use the word or the title God. But here the title is Lord when you're reading this um, because they didn't have a Lord over them. Even though they had a God, they didn't really have a, a Lord, one to actually communicate with them and guide them. Um, uh, these are the new titles I've been putting in. And, okay, I'm still cleaning up. And then I ended up putting this one here. And you, if you've been following what I've been trying to say about the Kings, you can see the timeline here is progressing along um, a little bit faster than what uh, should be but the text here does fit the situation and then we get to Micah and Micah now here's where I changed the king's name here okay because I'm trying to make them as simple um, as possible uh, for the next generation of people to read this. <laughs> um, so here I needed to correct because what I've learned in others, I need to put into the text going forward. Now they weren't high places. High places is where they would um, make an offering uh, to their god or goddess. And what that would mean is on top of the roof, play on top of the roofs, or go to a uh, top of a hill, and uh, say I'm closest to these characters as I can get, and uh, they would say, okay. But they really had pillars made up all over the place, um, and they would put an idol on top of the pillar, showing this is the god or goddess that you're supposed to be following. So. Um, I needed to put idle pillars, um, and it wouldn't have had more than one idol. It would have just been one idol. 
depending if they wanted to put um, Ashram is what I've got as her name is being going to be shown to you in the text later. Um, but uh, Ra, uh, Ra was her um, creator or her um, when it's uh, when it comes to Malachi. Uh, this isn't Malachi. Yeah, I think Malachi comes up, and I'll explain it then. Um, and this is like an open country. Um, no, it has to be a field for planning because you have to understand even today that they are looking for open ground that they can just move the rocks and pile the rocks and then they can start planting, you know, just turn the soil over a couple of times. I think it takes maybe two years before all the um, stuff stops growing uh, type of thing. But the object is, is then when the field is done, um, it's there. Now, uh, it's open field for planting is what they were looking for. It's the easiest land. Um, and then he's talking about how we will pour down the fortress walls down into this river, okay? I added this river, and it is known even today as the River Jezreel. Uh, hold on, let me go get that. I need this over here now. <clears throat> hmm. um, I'm going to put a map in here on the next one, and that map will be stuck in here so it knows. In fact, let me go. Sh let me show you um, what I'm talking about. How the next how the next text going to look. I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to have the name up here. I'm going to have all the video links here. It'll be a PDF to be downloaded. Um, this link takes you to the map that is down below. This is to bump the, bring you back from there back to the beginning. Um, the table of contents, this is the table of contents. And let me see here. I think we're right here. Maybe it's the first one. Because it's, yeah, right here. This is what I'm going to do when I can later. Add a lot more uh, images so that you can uh, have a better awareness of what's going on. For example, that when the story is being told, and it's being about uh, the uh, Samara, how it has, this has to be on, oh, I see what's going on. Uh, when you're over a picture, it changes my uh, mouse. Um, but you can see here's the River Jezreel, and then the uh, fortress walls are gonna pour down this, um, into the into the water from here so uh, the other thing is is everybody's going to say well this is the location for jezreel or samara and that's not true when you uh hear the stories um how the king that was uh, they were over here fighting and for this area here against um uh arams and i showed you that's this is the story when they did overtake, um, although that wasn't here, but th this is the second time they're coming down to fight. And they're wondering, he's, the king has to come back to the fort because he has got uh, a wound. And over in this area somewhere, 
um, I think it was Elijah sent to anoint uh, Jehu as king. So he goes over there and anoints him. And then when he's coming back, the story about him coming back, the guard on the tower says, I see the riders coming and one looks like the riding of Jehu. And then the king says, send out uh, and find out what they're doing or what is a piece or not. So you can tell that there's a guy that's got to get on a horse. He's got to ride out and meet him. And the a report from the tower again says he's met him, but he's not returning. So now the king gets in the chariot and he goes out to find out what's going on. This can only happen if you're high on a mountain and you're overlooking this path that they got to come back and forth and across. Okay. So this here is what's going on. Now, this here area here might be the Valley of Je uh, Jezreel as well. Okay, I, I, I just, the way everything is, the way you have it on your Google search, the text does not say that. Here we have the story, and I'm going to give maps to uh, explain the text. So it's down into the Jezreel River, okay? And then uh, needed a few correcting here. Um, title here was the first prophecy to Judah. And then they, wasn't, they wouldn't ask for a tithe. They would be asking for a fee. Um, around here, it wasn't, they weren't coming from many kingdoms. They were coming from the surrounding kingdoms to come home. Um, and saying, come, let us go back to our creator. Um, it wouldn't be that Jesus was going to be a ruler, but he was going to be about a king. So put the word king here. When I read this without these words here, it didn't sound right. So I added those words there. And then you can see the second prophecy of Judah here. And then uh, I put her idols, and this is on those pillars. But I use the word tall because we know they're pillars, but what kind of pillars? They're tall pillars. And it does say that they had the images on top of those pillars here. So uh, her idols are, is, is what I put because they're either cast or they're made out of wood. Um, here's where I had to put in here her name that we got from another text from when doing these. So um, I think I've changed that in a few places, um, or added her name in a few places. But the object is, is it reads more like uh, the first writer would or wrote it. It's not her, him, he, his um, example. If you really think the uh, kings of Egypt were called pharaohs, that's absolutely funny because a pharaoh, the word pharaoh comes from Greek text or Greeks, and they weren't around until like about 700 years before um, Jesus appeared on the land. But the object is, is that you think the king, or you think Moses and Aaron didn't know the name of the king? I mean, it's actually, they re somebody removed his name 22 times on the text and put the word pharaoh up. And now everybody thinks there was pharaohs for the king of for a set of kings of Egypt, and uh, that's all because of, they deceived you, because Aaron and Moses would have known uh, who his name was, and they would have entered it into the text. And you can see here another map that I've added. Oh, I did I added it here. Sorry, I went all the way to the other book, but I did want to show you a little bit about what's going to happen in the next. It should be in the description below by the time. This text gets out. I've still got to get my uh, web page working right, um, and got to add a lot of there to be able to connect it to the web. Um, and let's see what was okay. And this was a prophecy to Judah, and this is supposed to be the text that's. You can see very needed very little editing. Uh, high corner towers. Well, actually, they had gate towers. Um, at the entrance of the larger cities, they would build these towers to have gates, and then they'd 
uh, put up wood around them. Either they were just making logs hooked together to make a wall, but it was something that was fortified as not to be able to allow to come in. In fact, along these walls, sometimes they built um, a path up on top for them to walk around. And that's pretty much what it means fortify. But it does, they aren't corner towers. They're actually gate towers. They're the ones that you'd have to enter into. And those gate towers would be something where the guards are either doing the observing or uh, allowing people to come in and out or um, control the control the people when they come in and out. Um, it wouldn't have been the lowly people. It would have been the weak or weaker people uh, that they were that our creator was leaving behind. Um, here I had to add her name here again because when it starts out, it's the it's her people that are rebelling. These are known as Jews. Okay, these ones that are onto the female goddess, and this is the name that the text gives to her. Um, so we'll use it right now. And then I had to add her, her creator Ra, uh, draw near to her creator Ra. So this is what they refer. Ra was a Egyptian god for the sun. And so when you see the read text that um, uh, were when they're falling away, I think it is said that they brought the star of Egypt with them. Well, they brought the sun god from Egypt with them, but this, the word star, they wouldn't have known about stars. That's a word that's been added or changed, uh, I would say, from product, the uh, King James text to say that that's how that got changed to the word star. They didn't understand them as stars. Um, they thought they thought at that time that that was the next step in life to live here on earth then to become a god and be part of the host of heaven. Um, and our creator does not make decrees, he prophesies, and uh, your days will pass like shaft. Um, these little addings are changing and needed to be done here. For example, this one here I had as all as one uh, verse like this. And what I've done is I've changed it like this. So, so that's all. And then I'm getting rid of this. And then it kind of closes up the end. And you can see now we're coming to the end of the order. Um, and I did have, let's see. Um, and this book. Um, as you can see, I put this king's map here in the beginning uh, or right after this. So when people are reading, it's a good idea to have this calendar or this the king lines. And this is what I refer to a lot. Even though I know a lot about the king's story, there's some things that are very important uh, that needs to be noted and then it's easier to remember what's going on. Um, so we're getting closer to the end here. A few more corrections here needed to be happening. This just seems to need more words to be explained and just sort of, uh, I could have made this one verse and, it read better as to be four verse like this. Um, it also filled in the blank of where and what was going on. Um, I needed to add this to make a four verse uh, uh, format. And I had it blank in the video, but I filled it in because I've read it over and over. And it is talking about Jesus coming to Jerusalem. So... And you are the descendants. We have to include the women in this text. We are not going to not have them involved in the text here. Here, I've had to add all these words here. And let's see, 35. 
Okay, I'm not, I need to take a quick break, so I'm going to have you study this text here. Okay, so why do I have you study text like this? Well, this text actually proves uh, what is Holy Spirit. A lot of people uh, don't know what Holy Spirit is, and Jesus defines here Holy Spirit, and I go through and I um, use other verses to explain uh, that when they said they were actually prophesizing, which means that Holy Spirit is our Creator's words or His breath uh, speaking for you. So there is no Trinity. Back to this, getting back to this text, um, this needed a lot of correction here. Um, as you can see, uh, seeking you were sought. And it's not a godly offspring, it's the goddess's offspring. Um, uh, what, what I'm talking about is this word bubble here. Okay. Uh, this is, what is offspring? It is the bubble. Uh, what happens after they experience this, um, what I call, a sex with the so-called female goddess um, that there's a few things that happen to the body uh, different times of the year different days of the moon month or whatever but the object is is on the left hand crescent moon day um, there's this bubble that goes up their spine and around their body and this bubble is actually what they would use as the letter O and so when you see, O oh, Holy Spirit, O oh, God, O oh, Creator, O oh, Lord, O oh, people of Israel, um, there was no letter O oh, in the Hebrew text. So adding the English letter O oh, into the Hebrew text and then having to point out that this O oh, is all over the place, I think it's like 390 times uh, in the Bible. So if you do a research, uh, this is a bubble. This is not O. Oh, so when you're trying to figure out um, or you're learning uh, about the corruption of the text, this is the big part of being the corruption. But the object here is, is then they took Asherim's bubble over her, meaning that they can no longer have uh, sex with or share their love with their wife and uh, they must remain single. That's why the priests in the Catholic Church are single. This is why you have nuns 
that are single, they have this practice. Um, you will see um, so-called holy people and monks, uh, Buddhists, they're all remaining single for this um, practice of meditating and having a sex with the so-called female goddess. And this is her name that the Hebrews gave her. Actually, they gave her three, but I know it's those guys giving her three different meanings for the, the actually what happens at different stages of this, of, of their goddess. So that is all cleaned up. Now this text, this has to move to be Obadiah. Obadiah was the first text that we have, and so this needed to be placed there because it's from Edom. It's about Edom. Now that needs to be placed differently. Malachi couldn't because Edom's either gone or something here. I, don't, I can't remember the order right now. Um, okay, the order is Edom's. Edom uh, is just been uh, since David's time just people living and having to pay tribute. Uh, they have can't have a king over them. And then Yah, I've added uh, from the Psalms, if you listen to the Psalms, especially 149, you watch that video, that's the, that's the name they gave to Jesus. And uh, Psalm 109 does, um, I do the breakdown and show you that in the text. Um, and you can see there's a lot being written about him here. Um, like I said, there's many times that our creator, when he prophesying that he's talking about, you're supposed to wait for his servants or wait for Jesus, uh, for them to be his servants. And after his days, they are to be his servants. Okay, so that's us in heaven, we're his servants. Okay, here's a reminder that it needs to be moved to me, uh, for me when I was re-editing the text. Um, and this here, um, this text is at Jeremiah's time. The prophecy of Nebuchadnezzar can only happen, I was happy when I uh, went through this, and I'm, you probably would have seen the excitement, because it's the first time Nebuchadnezzar's name's mentioned that, uh, He's going to be sending uh, the Babylon's, Babylonians coming down to uh, take over Ju uh, Judah. Now, the thing here is, is the age of Nebuchadnezzar and when this prophecy has to be uh, said. And when you do uh, a good search of his lifetime, I think the book text has them over 80 years old. Um, but when you start to break down and you know people, if they live to be on uh, 65, um, even in their day, um, their eyes would go bad, they couldn't see. So, um, and you know, as older people uh, get older, their feet start shuffling. Um, so, you can't have a king going around not being a king of strength um, for the people, and they would want his son to take over as king. So when it comes down to it, it has to be Jeremiah. I'm pretty sure Numa's, uh, Nahum, Nahum's name is going to be uh, removed at some time because of the fact that uh, there was only one prophet at that time at the very end, it was Isaiah, and then it was Jeremiah. To have uh, Nahum, Nahum come out on the blue, we can't have that. So that's why I'm mentioning now that it seems that it's going to be labeled as Jeremiah has said these things. So what I did was I just changed this word to a, a, a easier word for a 12th grader to understand. <coughs> here again this text refers that it has to be from Jeremiah but it's only a piece of information because 
if you look at the year span of uh, when it when they conquered, I have him. Let's say they made him a king at 13, 14 years old. Okay, now that's pretty young king for him to turn around and just say, okay, we're heading to Babylon. He had to have advisors, and Babylon had to be well established. In fact, when they went and fought Assyria, um, the Assyrians feared them so much that one of the guys that was down there that was going to take, um, that came up to the gate of Jerusalem, and uh, he, he, Zeke's time, uh, this is Zadik, I'm saying Zeke's time, uh, he was uh, then pushed away by our creator because the rumor of a fight up there, they needed everybody up there to take on Babylon. Uh, it seems they made an agreement, they didn't conquer each other, they made an agreement. Okay, you gotta understand that. But the object is, is Nebuchadnezzar's life when he was little would have been all based on war and if he was by the king he would have been listening to the advisors and what they want to do for the future and what was going on but to put him at 25 you would have to make him 95 the the earliest age he can be at this time in this prophecy and this date time he's got to be 13. Um, and I just made notes to myself that it has to be changed later when I do this. Um, because, like I said, we didn't get to do the other uh, prophets yet. Because the other prophets, um, they are need to be added uh, into the text. But those books are so big um, that it's going to take a month, maybe two months to do one book. So I'm going to leave them to be done at a different time. But as you can see, Daniel will go here. Now, I've done Daniel several different ways. So um, I think what I'm going to do is just put in our creator's formats here because it is so good, so descriptive. And I think I only had to throw away really one chapter out of Daniel. But the object is... is um, we need to, when I insert, it'll be in this area that there's, I think, who was it? I put them at the beginning of the video, so if you want to go back and see the ones that are going to go in there. But um, here is where I uh, actually combined this text from Ezra. It's, okay, this, okay, this is Haggai. Okay, yeah, I'm going to combine it with Ezra, okay? This is the part that I'm going to combine, is this chapter 2. And this is what text needs to be done to be moved around to do that. Example, uh, this text here is actually this text here, okay? And I shouldn't have these the same color then. These need to be a different color. And this needs to be this color so you know where I moved it from. Okay. Now, um, this here is a note because when I went to look at the names, well, the two books use different names. Uh, this guy's name pulled up and I had already removed a lot of that. So that's good. And he was exactly the leader for... Uh, building uh, his house, okay? And it wouldn't have been the uh, Israelis that were building it. It would have been um, uh, the Levites that were building the house. Now, uh, this E needed to be added here, um, or not on this text. This text is using this M as uh, just you, and, it's you, and the other one in the other text is Joshua, okay? Joshu, Joshu, excuse me, the only thing difference was was there was the O to an E. So I'm going to be changing that in the other text. Now when it comes to this, they actually have another guy over there and his name is like this. Okay, so uh, what I did 
was I'm going to remove this part and then this part was removed in the other video which means that when I take out this and all this it's going to start from here now what's also important is that the most important words that I'm removing then is this guy being the high priest I don't want to lose that text so I've actually added that into the text later in Ezra and I'll show you that when I get to Ezra here and this is some of the correcting of those names you if those have been following me you'll you'll notice that those changes have been made um, we now know which king it was after doing this Darius and this text does not need to be added at this time now that we have a better complete story um, okay so this is going to be Ezra uh, and when it combines so let's get down here to okay now when I did a study um, my study and I let's see oh I've got that um, let me just pull this up but you can see the text when I think this is mentioned uh, this river here is mentioned at the time that they divided the land up um, if not it's a name that uh, it's the river that's named today I tried to be exact when I'm looking at the text um, because you notice I only have it named as a brook or as a river for the simple fact that the text did not give me names okay but if you look um, way over here you can see that this river here is I'm thinking what they tried to make it um, they're copied it from or to or whatever but the object here is, is this one will be removed and we're going to leave this one here as the, this river and I think I even moved it over here the uh, Sorrick River yeah I'm pretty sure I moved it that's um, I guess I should do that here as well to say that this is where that's going to be okay and then this will be all all right now going down here this is Haggai's prophecy that's in here okay and I don't know about this these actual dates so those dates still can't be verified um, let's see I'm pretty close to the end here in fact I think I'm, I'm at the end and then this is the end of Ezra okay so what I'm going to do in the next one is uh, go over that text of showing you all the uh, showing you the text uh, how it's going to be and uh, get into that a little bit more and uh, hopefully just give you screenshots that uh, people want to take screenshots <laughs>